Okay, thank you very much, Nicole, for the introduction. Well, I'm going to present you uh, the first uh, preliminary results of our research project that we are um, taking uh, now uh, in place. Uh, the project is called Welcoming Spaces in Europe, uh, Revitalizing Shrinking Areas by Hosting Non-European Migrants. It's a research project uh, about um, the world of the Horizon 2020 um, call. And uh, well, the first uh, objectives uh, of this uh, research project that is very much also uh, policy oriented is uh, to answer to these uh, two challenges. First of all, is how to contribute to the revitalization of the shrinking areas in the European Union. And the second challenge is also how to offer a welcoming a space for non-European migrants uh, that want to pursue uh, their life project. So these are, these are the, the, the main objectives of the Welcoming Spaces project. Uh, the consortium is um, coordinated by the University of Utrecht and also involves partners of four other countries uh, as Italy, Poland, Germany. In Spain, we are both, uh, we are two partners, uh, the University of La Cor Coruña and the Sepain Foundation, which is a, a foundation, a third uh, sector foundation that is working and is uh, taking into place uh, programs in some shrinking areas in order to revitalize and to welcome um, immigrants. So it's very interesting to work with this uh, partnership because it's not only a partnership of scholars, but also of uh, people that is working on the field. Okay, so let's, I'm going to present you uh, some of the first preliminary results. So uh, the main objective of uh, the presentation is going to compare some uh, welcoming initiatives that target the migrant population and uh, for uh, comparing the, those welcoming initiatives, I'm going to take into account uh, different migration profiles. Uh, the first one is the newcomers. I'm going to explain afterwards what we uh, think, uh, what, what do we, do we uh, think about newcomers and then the root migrants, okay? And then the idea is to examine the impact of these welcoming uh, initiatives, uh, impact that they have on sustainable development and uh, in the project, in Welcome in the Spaces project, we analyze three factors in order to assess sustainable development. The first one is economic viability. The second is social well-being. And the third is political participation. So the idea is to analyze how these uh, welcoming initiatives, they have an impact on these uh, three factors. OK, so uh, well, Another idea is to assess uh, the underlying factors for the success or failure of these welcome initi initiatives. We think it's very important to analyze which are the factors that really um, we can identify that have a success or that really motivate or are under a failure of these welcoming initiatives. The presentation that I'm going to, uh, to do uh, today is based on a paper that we wrote together with two other colleagues, Paula Alonso and Leticia Santavalla, and is in process of evaluation at the Journal of International Migration and Integration. So I'm going to take um, uh, these three objectives and I'm going to try to develop them. Well, this is the methodology that we uh, took into place. Uh, we selected nine localities in uh, six different regions in Spain, from Andalucía, Aragón, Castilla-La Mancha, Castilla-León, Extremadura, and Galicia. Uh, those are the main, uh, those are the municipalities and the, and the regions that we choose. And uh, we did, this is the amount of fieldwork that we did. We did fieldwork uh, with a total of 166 participants in interviews and focus groups. Uh, Paula Alonso and Leticia Santavalla, my colleagues, did the field work. They went to uh, all these places and they uh, did all the interviews and the focus groups. 
and I'm going to uh, tell you which are the, the number of initiatives that we have selected. We have identified 39 initiatives. Uh, those initiatives, they can come from economic driving, so they are welcoming initiatives, for instance, uh, that come from the labor market, for instance, entrepreneurs, that want to welcome immigrants in order to revitalize uh, or to work in, in some um, economic sectors of the labor market. Other uh, initiatives can be public administration driven. So it could be like uh, some policies that have been taken mostly at the local level. Other uh, initiatives are third sector driven. And we have also migrant driven initiatives. So those, those are the, 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 the total amount, 39 initiatives that we have identified and that we have analyzed in these uh, municipalities. Okay, I'm going to take the, the example of Galicia because I'm going to uh, explain more in deep the Galician case. Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, I know Nicole, she is uh, uh, familiar with uh, Galicia. But Galicia is one of the Spanish regions that has been more severely affected by shrinking due in part to the mass migration of Spaniards, of Galician people that migrating to Latin America, for instance, to Argentina, Venezuela, to Uruguay, even to Cuba, and also to Europe, uh, to France, uh, Germany, during the 19th and the 20th, 20th centuries. Okay, so in Galicia there was this mass emigration process that, that is one of the, the, the reasons uh, that uh, of, of, of this uh, region being a shrinking region, okay? During the 90s, the region began to receive immigrants on the, on the one hand from Galician descendants, so many of these, uh, um, some of the migrants that uh, migrated in the 20th century to uh, Europe came back, uh, so we can speak about our return migration but on the other hand we also started to receive uh, migrants from uh, latin america that are descendants of this uh, galician emigration so that means people that was born for instance in argentina or that was born in venezuela but uh, came uh, to galicia like uh, looking after uh, the roots and uh, looking after uh, going back to the, the, the country of uh, the uh, family ascendants. Okay, so um, these immigrants, they didn't have previous connections to uh, also, we also started to receive an immigration that uh, did not have any connection with Galician immigration. That's what we are going to call newcomers so people that doesn't have any relationship with galician immigration and those that we are descendants of galician immigration we're going to call them uh, roots migrants so i'm going to take uh, the two cases the case of burela uh, in burela we have mostly an immigration of newcomers uh, uh, this is an immigration mainly motivated by economic drivers the nationalities that came to Burela are not related with former Galician immigration. And, uh, and then I'm going to take a Celanova. In Celanova, it's more like a roots migrants migration. So uh, this migration, immigration flows that are taken into our place at the moment, nowadays, are linked to a historical immigration of people from Galicia. Many of them, they are return migrants, but all others are returned to the roots. So descendants of former immigrants. Okay, so I'm going to start by uh, speaking about Burela. Burela is one of the most important fishing uh, ports in the Cantabrian coast in Spain. And uh, during the, uh, at the end of the 20th century, century there was a crisis in the fishing sector that uh, was derived from different factors so a lower intensity in the catches a decrease in the profits and a shortage of local labor we have to say that 
they open an aluminium uh, factory very close to Burela. So many of the local workers, they decided to leave the uh, sea, they decided to, to leave the fishing sector to work to this factor because the working conditions were uh, much better. Okay, so uh, well, what is interesting to see is that uh, currently Burela has the youngest average age in the province of Lugo, which is a very, very uh, uh, a province that has been uh, very devitalized in demographic terms. And this is explained by the high percentage of foreign born population that has settled in the last years. Here, for instance, you can see how uh, there has been a uh, demographic growth in Burela, and this is thanks to immigration. So at the beginning, the first community that start to arrive to Burela is uh, people from Cape Verdean community. Um, although uh, there was also people from Peru, Senegal, Indonesia, Morocco, and Ghana. Nowadays, the town also uh, has other uh, type of immigration, and there is more than 40 nationalities that live now in Burela. Okay, so in Burela, uh, in addition to the fishing work, uh, what is interesting is that Burela is at the center of the, of the region, of the comarca, the county. So there is a hospital and also a, a, a huge uh, service sector that makes this uh, municipality uh, dynamic also in terms of the uh, third sector, in terms of employ employment in the construction, is shipbuilding, woodworking industries, and other sectors of employment. Where do immigrants normally uh, are uh, employed in Burela? So men, mainly they are in the fishing and in the sailing, and women in the service sector and care sector, okay? So many of them, they work in the bars, restaurant, hotels, or taking care of the elderly people, okay? So, well, what we saw in, 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 in Burela is that the ar ar arrivals of these newcomers are fundamentally based on the attraction of the labor market, okay, rather than on welcoming initiatives, okay? It is a welcoming model that we call it uh, the waves, okay, because um, it goes with the waves, okay? It depends on the tides and on the attractiveness of the fish offered by the sea. So many migrants, they settle in Burela, but there is also a mobility of fisher people that go, they work for a few months and go back to their places of origin. So uh, it's um, this kind of um, uh, modality uh, or welcoming model based on this uh, attraction of the sea. Okay, I'm going to read a quote of an interview that I think is very illustrative of Burela's model. Today, what sustains Burela, what has always sustained Burela are the ships. Burela is a fishing village, and what has always sustained Burela has always been the sea. People come here because of the sea. All the migrant people went to work at the sea. The only one, the only who raised Burela as such was not the aluminium factory, but the workers that brought the sea and the boat. If we lose the sea, it's over, Burela dies. So I think here is very uh, illustrative the quote about how uh, Burela is very much linked with these waves, okay, and very much linked to the dynamic of the labor market, okay. Uh, in Burela, there is um, also um, uh, also uh, other uh, uh, welcoming initiatives uh, that explain what uh, Burela was so successful in the attraction of uh, newcomers. One is the huge uh, development of the associations in the in the municipality, and also uh, the support of the town council. In Burela, there is a municipal social integration plan for immigrants. This is very important because in Galicia, even in the big cities as uh, La Coruña or other big cities, we don't find such a uh, integration plan of immigrants. And the council of Burela is very much um, uh, integrated and is very much developing integration uh, policies. 
Uh, there is also a service for immigrant population, an intercultural mediator. There are cultural activities that are organized in order to uh, link uh, Cap Verdean um, and Galician uh, music and culture. There are also projects that have been found for cooperation and development with some municipalities in Cap Verde. So it's really uh, very dynamic in uh, welcoming initiatives from the uh, local government, but also from the associations. Uh, there is a very huge um, association of uh, Cap Verdean women that uh, is uh, taking a lot of uh, uh, well, a lot of uh, initiatives. Here we have uh, Celanova. Celanova is another case, a very different case. In Celanova, uh, there was a, this is ranking due to aging and dependency. And uh, from uh, the 2000, uh, there has been a development of uh, migration that comes from uh, Venezuela. Venezuela descendants of, um, of uh, descendant origin, people that are uh, normally uh, family members of uh, Galician immigrants. Where are the uh, migrants employed? Uh, men are uh, many uh, in many cases employed as entrepreneurs, and women also as entrepreneurs in the service sector or also in the care sector. Well, I think what is very important here is that the model of a uh, welcoming model is very different from Burela because uh, uh, Celanova has a very stagnant labor market. It doesn't have a dynamic labor market. So what really makes uh, the main attraction is the affective and social relationship that the children of Galician, uh, those roots migrants, mainly from Venezuela, have with their line of their ancestors. OK, so, um, so uh, that makes that the, the fact that there is not this dynamism, dynamism in the labor market makes that there are like a lot is a lack of employment alternatives and this difficult uh, for um, Celanova to retain the new inhabitants so uh, in many cases uh, Celanova is like a trampoline is used like a land to land and then the people they take off and go to other places because they don't find a job and there is not this economic dynamics okay so what I have presented, so we call uh, this uh, model the oak model because it has the attractiveness of the central and majestic tree, but it's really revitalized in economic terms. Okay, so uh, the emotional attraction is what uh, really uh, is more important here in this uh, model and uh, how uh, the people really uh, are committed uh, with their land of their ancestors and that's why they want to establish in uh, Felanova. It's a very different model. Okay, once I uh, in Felanova, there are also some uh, interesting associations, uh, some of them from immigrant origin and background, and also uh, this uh, migration is supported by the, by the regional government through a, a return program for Latin American descendants of Galician immigrants. Okay, so once I have presented uh, the uh, main uh, localities, I want to uh, come to the uh, underlying factors that can uh, explain the uh, successful of welcoming spaces. In the case of Burela, the successful of um, welcoming uh, spaces is the dynamic and attractive labor market, the wide range of services because uh, of the situation, including the hospital, the public transport, the local policy is really relevant as a key factor to support the integration of immigrants, also the support of the associative uh, movement, the dense network of associations, the cultural and religious diversity, and the strong media activity, because also there is a strong media uh, strategy from the country town, uh, from the local town, um, that uh, in order to attract immigrants. In the case of Celanova, we have like this return, the, the factors that of successful is the return immigration support that the regional policy, this return program from the regional Galicia regional uh, program. Also, they have uh, uh, the British social capital, the fact that these people, they have family 
from a Galician origin. So that means that they, they, the family members of Galician origin can help them, uh, for instance, in order to uh, set up a business, in order to give them some counseling. And uh, this is this social, uh, British social capital is really relevant in this way. Also the fact that these people, they have the nationality because they have a Spanish uh, origin. So they have the Spanish nationality. Also, they have uh, this uh, housing. Some of them they have inherited ho or home ownership because of they, 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 their parents. They they left them uh, this housing. Uh, there is also this uh, rural development initiatives that are supported by the European Union in this region, and also the presence of the third sector and the uh, migrant associations is very strong in Celanova. Okay, so. But even if we have these factors that can explain the success of these um, uh, welcoming initiatives, we have also a negative impact of some, some factors that have a negative impact. Okay, so I don't want to, uh, to give only the positive picture. Uh, in Burela, for instance, we have noticed that the school is a space of exclusion and a, a space of blockage of uh, social mobility for the descendants of migrants, especially those from a uh, Cap Verdean origin, they have a very tough time in order to be successful at the school. So there is like this kind of social mobility, a blockage for the second generation. Also in Burela, for instance, the social capital is all bonding social capital. That means that is only um, people are, um, they don't mix very much with the uh, Spanish population. They there is a strong community of people from Peru or a strong community of people from Carver, but they stay among them. So there is no like bridging social capital. And there is a, a difficulties in establishing these bridging spaces. In the case of Celanova, for instance, we notice that the very the, there is not a dynamism in the labor market. So really the only option for those people to stay is uh, to set up businesses. And also there's an overqualification of the migrant population and a difficulty to homologation of studies for these people. Uh, there is a lack of rental housing stock and also um, some negative impact of some European Union agricultural policy that I'm going, not going to develop, but also is uh, something that has a negative impact in the sustainability of these welcoming spaces. Okay, so I only, I think I only have five, uh, three minutes uh, left, uh, isn't it? Okay, so I think I'm going to pass a little bit uh, through uh, those uh, more detailed uh, things and I'm going to just uh, to uh, give like a kind of a conclusion and then if you want, I can explain more how the different factors, the economic viability, the social well-being, and the political participation is uh, relevant. But I, I think, well, just con concerning political support, I have time uh, to say that I think this is very key factor in order to understand how the welcome initi initiatives are uh, sustainable. For instance, in the case of Burela, this institutional support of um, the social integration programs, the services, the communication campaign really acts as an attraction and also as a, a sustainable factor for people to stay. And uh, also the fact that the people, they arrive in a regular migration uh, because many of the people, the fishers, they can come with contracts at origin. So they are not, there is not a very huge irregular immigration. Also, for instance, the participation of immigrant population. Uh, we have to note that, for instance, in Burela, there was a council for social integration of Cap Verdean origin. This is a very successful uh, thing. And also the media strategy. And also in Celanova, if we take into account how the participation is very relevant, for instance, the support of the local government, the support of the regional government in order to give citizenship to these uh, root migrants, and also the support of the third uh, sector is really relevant. So political participation is a key issue in order to understand the sustainability of these uh, initiatives. And just to conclude, I would like to um, 
to give you this, uh, this uh, summary of how those are the main factors that we have to take into account in order to see the impact of the, um, of the uh, uh, welcoming initiatives in the sustainability of uh, these uh, municipalities. For instance, we, we need to understand the migration context, we need to understand the labor market dynamics and the, associative, the, the role of the associative movement, the role of the third sector, the public policies, the social services, services and housing, the bonding and bridging social capital articulations, and also the projection in the media. Those are the main factors that we have uh, identified. And just if you, I think I have uh, six seconds, but I would like to show you a short video of uh, Batuca Tabanca, this Cap Verdean woman in Burela. I don't know if I have time. Yes, I do. Okay, I, I hope it will work because sometimes it doesn't work when, when you are online, but let's try. I hear no sound, unfortunately. Yes, Laura, it's always a bet with YouTube. Okay, so with this uh, just short uh, a video, Batuka Tabanka, I would like to finish. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>